Samsung Q90A. I've done this before, but this is the 43 inch. I haven't been able to get my hands on one. I have now, so I thought I'd do it. Uh, also, check the description. I'll put timestamps in there for the dimensions, dimensions of the stand, visa dimensions, and other important things. The top of the box, you can see we've got the neck of the pedestal stand there. Also, quick setup guide and instruction book and remote pack. Pedestal neck out, quick setup guide and instruction book and remote pack. It's the polystyrene. Heavy pedestal base, same as the larger Q90s. That is the TV itself. From the front, it from the side there so nice and slim and also from the back remote control and instruction book pack CI card slot reader figure 8 UK mains lead with right angled input treble A batteries for the standard remote and smart remote we'll get close up next see it's the one with the solar cell on the back so leave it face down it will top up the charge or keep it near charged if that does run out you can see we've got a usb type c input there so we can fully charge it from a phone charger as well and looking at it face up we've got power on and off voice command button channel numbers or other inputs multi view button, cursor arrows left, right, up, down and enter, back button, home button, play pause, press play pause, you get rewind and fast forward there, volume rocks up and down and in for mute, channels rock up and down and in for guide, quick access, Netflix, Prime and Samsung TV Plus. Looking at the standard remote, I will put a link in the description, you can go buy one off Amazon as well. Uh, power on and off, source button, channel numbers, teletext if available where you are, pre-channel, back to the previous channel, volume up and down, mute button, channel list, channels up and down, Netflix, home button, prime video, Samsung TV Plus, so they're shortcuts to those, guide button, if you're on the guide you've got up, down, left, right and enter, return to go back step by step, exit all the way out, then you've got settings, info for the info bar, settings is a shortcut straight to the settings, audio description or subtitles button, and then you've got play, stop, fast forward and rewind. So if you're in apps or media playback, you can use those buttons there. Flip it over, treble A batteries into the back. Onto the pedestal stand. Large, thick, mild steel base there and a powder coated sort of black matte black finish four threaded holes at the top there for the neck to attach to and some rubber pads underneath so it doesn't slip off the table and also doesn't mark it Pretty cool and in this bag we've got the neck to attach to the pedestal stand also in there, two screw packs, M4 by 14 mil. You can see at the top there, we've got these slots and the threaded holes. Underneath here, we have these three tabs to slot into those slots. And also four little through holes for the screws to poke through. So that into there like so, drop the four screws in. I'll quickly wind those in. Now ready to go onto the back of the TV. Now I've got the TV laid face down as per instruction. So that's the pedestal base that I made earlier. Slots onto there like so, four more screws to drop in the back. I'll just quickly wind those in.
Okay, also while we've got it on this view, you can see the figure eight mains input there. And we've also got these grooves down the back of the pedestal stand. And quick example of that is, I can plug a figure eight mains in there, find the relevant groove for the cable, whichever one it may be. And just tuck my wire into there to keep them nice and neat going down the back. Brill. Okay, quick look at the inputs on the side. You can see we've got USB 5 volt half an amp, USB at one amp for portable hard drives to record to or playback media, digital optical audio out there, HDMI 4, HDMI 3 is enhanced audio return channel, HDMI 2 and HDMI 1, so four HDMIs in total, wired internet or LAN, twin sat for watch and record if you're using satellite as your source, and terrestrial aerial connection as well. Little bit there, peel that off, you can pop your CI card slot reader in. Onto the dimensions, most important one probably is the width of the pedestal base. That's uh, 46 and a half centimeters or 18 and a quarter inches from whatever it stood on to the top, just over 62 centimeters or 24 and a half inches. The depth from the rear of that stand to the front of it, 22 and a half centimeters or eight and three quarter inch just over to the bottom of the screen about six and a half centimeters looking at it from the back the visa dimension there is 200 by 200 from the bottom of the tv to that first well to the center of the bottom visa mount holes is 165 millimeters if that helps anybody I've now wired in power wide internet and aerial so I'll say peely peely and take off that screen protector. Okay, so you can see the remote control pair in there after I press the OK button. I'm going to go remote control step by step. It tells me there I've got an aerial connected, terrestrial digital, wide internet connection. Gonna agree to all for now. Okay, so it says install the latest software. I'll say now and we'll suffer the pain. Okay, so we've downloaded the update. It may still be installing, but we'll proceed for now. So skip. Postcode in for regional programming. So you can see there, it gives us a quick summary of channels it's tuned in in the background while I've been doing that. So I'll say next. And service provider I will pick because I didn't put the postcode in. Select your voice service if you're using the voice command. Bixby actually works quite well on these, but you can go for Google or Alexa. So I'll skip for now. And there you can link Prime and other apps using your mobile phone and just input in a code from the TV to pair the devices together. So we can quickly add Spotify, BBC Sounds, Google Duo and Samsung Promotion there if we wish to. I'm just going to save it as it is for that home screen. 
Now a quick bit about adaptive sound, so it will look at your environment and also the content and optimise the screen and sound to give you the best possible sound and picture. So I'll say it later for that, we'll do it on standard. <laughs> TV. Just, call oh, just come up with a region select there, so I'll say England, and my aerial is facing Yorkshire, so it is important to pick the right one. Close. Okay, so while it's poor quality in the background, just going to go to the home. What I do first is the power and energy settings, so on settings. Down to general. Power and energy saving, brightness optimization. I may leave on at home, but in so I'm going to turn it off. Motion lighting definitely turn off, it's trying to dim parts of the picture to save electricity. And auto power off, I shall turn off as well. That's an inactivity standby. If you don't press a button for so long, it will turn itself off. Also, tells me there the remote battery on my solar powered remote. Okay. I'll just shut up and I'll turn the sound up. Allegedly toxic environment. The company's CEO apologised and took a pay cut. But what does this mean for gamers? At the moment, Microsoft's Xbox consoles are lagging behind Sony's PlayStation 5 in terms of sales. By buying Call of Duty and the company behind it, Microsoft are fighting back by owning more and more exclusive rights. The question many players want to know now, though, is will they restrict their rivals' access to these major titles? Like many of the games themselves, tech companies are fighting their own battles, but for content. And gaming is fast becoming the most lucrative market in entertainment. Stefan Powell, BBC News. Well, the White House says the situation between Russia and Ukraine is extremely dangerous, and that Russia could at any point launch an attack Russia has deployed around 100,000 troops at the border, uh, but denies that it's planning to invade. Our diplomatic correspondent, James Landill, has the latest. Russian forces training near the border with Ukraine. Just some of thousands deployed there since the autumn, raising fears in the West that Russia's planning... OK, so a bit of standard TV content there. I'm going to see what the retail demo is. So to the home button again across to settings, down to general, system manager, change it to retail mode, I'll have to do those power and energy settings again when I put it back to home mode, but never mind. Put in your pin code, and go to retail, that'll give me the retail demo. Stop me. 
its hired residents, and today's figures showed a new post-pandemic factor shrinking the British workforce. The British jobs market has performed well, defying the expectations of the depths of the pandemic, especially so since the end of the furlough scheme in the autumn. Unemployment has remained low. But there's now a separate crisis, a shortage. I'm going to go onto YouTube, I'm just try a quick to tell, demo. Tell you how it is. Discovery YouTube. Okay, so I shall say credit to Ubisoft because this is their content. I'm just going to try next gen game trailer. So see what it looks like. Pretty cool. So again, credit to Ubisoft for that. So back to live TV. Uh, and that's it. Uh, Newsnight uh, is on BBC Two uh, in just a minute. Uh, here on BBC One, it's time to join our news teams. Okay, so if I go to the home button, we'll just have a quick look at the home menu. All the way to the left, you can see you've got your settings cog there with the instruction manual built in. Wi-Fi I'm connected to now, switched it to that for the update because it's quicker. Uh, intelligent mode, I've got it off at the moment, you can turn that on, just have a quick look. So you can see there, brightened up the picture a touch. Adaptive picture mode, standard sound mode, or we can go amplify for clearer voice. TV speaker output and there's the game mode shortcut if we're gaming and we've got a console plugged in. Sources or inputs there, digital butler connecting to other devices in your house, search, apps there or the app store, multi-view, ambient mode so we can have like screen savers in the background and the date and time when we've got it on standby, home, Samsung TV plus their on demand content, live TV which is on in the background, Netflix, Prime, BBC iPlayer, ITV, Disney plus, now, Rakuten, YouTube, Discovery Plus, all four, Samsung Health, you can do some exercise and Pilates and whatever in front of the TV. 
Apple TV there, so you've also got screen mirroring built in as well. Uh, internet browser, plug in your cheap Bluetooth mouse and keyboard and browse the basic internet functions. Google, Alexa and My5. So, all in all, pretty good. It's probably the best 43 inch TV on the market. It's near the top of the 4K range for Samsung in a smaller size. So a premium 43 inch TV there. And we shall say that's all for now. Tschüss.